the derivative function. Here is an application of power rule. The question is, apply power rule and determine f dash 1 for f of x equals 2 square root of x minus 2 divided by third root of x. Now, what is power rule? Let me first give you power rule, which is if the function f of x is equal to x to the power of n, then the derivative of this function, that is f prime of x, is equal to n times x to the power of n minus 1. That is power rule. So, the exponent n becomes a coefficient and the exponent decreases by 1, right? So, the derivative is normally 1 degree lower. So, that is what we see from power rule. So, we'll apply this rule to solve the given problem. Now, one more thing which sometimes students get confused with is when we say determine f dash of 1. That means we need to find derivative at x equals to 1, right? So, that's what it is. So, as a first step, we'll find the derivative of the function and then we'll substitute x equals to 1 to find the derivative of the function at x equals to 1, right? Now, if you have an equation like this, I will suggest it's a good idea to simplify this. And then we will apply power rule. So, we can write this as, so let me write them as powers, right? x to the power of 1 over 3, right? So, we can write this as divide by x to the power of 1 over 3. And here in the brackets, we have x to the power of half minus 2, right? So, you can rewrite your equation in this fashion, correct? Now, let's open the bracket or we can go one more step. That is, I will write this in the numerator. So, if I do that, then I can write this as x to the power of minus 1 over 3 correct? And then we have x to the power of half minus 2. I'm actually showing you very simple, simple steps because this is just the beginning and I want you to understand each and every step. How are we getting there? Okay, that's the concept. So now let's open the bracket, expand it. So we'll multiply this with both the terms and we'll get x to the power of. So when you multiply their exponents get added up. So, we get to the power of half plus which is minus 1 over 3, right? So, that is the first term. And the second will be minus 2 times x to the power of minus 1 over 3, right? So, that is how you get after expanding it. Let me now add this up and write it finally as x to the power of, so it is 1 over 3. So, when we have to do minus, so basically it is half minus 1 over 3 and then we have minus 2 to the power of x to the power of 1 over 3. Now, let's do this math. So, x to the power of, now we have to make a common denominator. The common denominator is 6, which we can make by multiplying the first by 3, multiplying and dividing and the second with 2, right? So, we do, then we get 3 over 6 minus 2 over 6. And so, we get 3 over 6 minus 2 over 6. That means 1 over 6, right? So, we get 1 over 6 here. And here we have 2 times x to the power of minus 1 over 3, right? I'm taking time here to do this and the students for whom this is a very trivial job, they can straight come to this step, okay? So finally, we have a function f of x which can be simplified and written as x to the power of 1 over 6 minus 2 times x to the power of minus 1 over 3. And now we can apply the power rule. Do you see x to the power of something? And that's something n is 1 over 6 here, right? 
and here it is minus 1 over 3. So now you know you can apply. So let's write f prime of x that is derivative of the function. So that is the notation f prime of x. You have to read it like f prime of x, right? So which means derivative of the given function. So the derivative of this function is n times n is 1 over 6. So 1 over 6 x to the power of n minus 1. That means 1 over 6 minus 1. Correct? Now for the second one, we have 2 times, so that is the 2, and then n is minus 1 over 3. So write this in bracket, minus 1 over 3, x to the power of minus 1 over 3, minus 1. Do you see that? So that is how we will get the derivative of this function, right? Remember, here we are also using another property of derivatives, that is, sum of derivatives can be combined, and difference of derivatives can also be combined, right? So derivative of the first term minus derivative of the second term. That's what we have written here, right? Now, let's write down what it is. It is 1 over 6 x to the power of, it goes here, 6 over 6, right? So 1 minus 6 is minus 5. So we get minus 5 over 6. So this minus and this becomes plus and becomes 2 over 3, right? 2 over 3, x to the power of. So 3 minus 1 minus 3 is minus 4. So we get minus 4 over 3. So, so that is what we get, right? So that is the derivative of this function at any point. Now for finding the answer, which is derivative of the function at 1, what we can do is we can plug in 1 here. So f dash of 1 is, so we are substituting 1 for x. So we get 1 over 6 times 1 over anything is just 1, right? So 1 over 6 as the first term, or you can write 1 to the power of minus 5 over 6 plus 2 over 3 1 to the power of minus 4 over 3, right? And that is 1 over 6 plus 2 over 3, right? So we can make it 4 over 6 and then we get 5 over 6 as our answer. So that is how we can find the derivative at a particular point, right? So this means f dash of x at x equals to 1, right? So that is how we can solve these kinds of questions. Well, sometimes the question could be, write this in a simplified form, then this could also be written as, let me just, let me just move on, say equals to 1 over 6, and we can write this in the denominator, right? And so we have 1 over 6 x to the power of 5 over 6, right? Plus 2 over 3 x to the power of 4 over 3, right? So instead of writing with the negative exponents, we could also write like that. Well, either way, the idea was to understand the meaning of f dash 1 and application of the power rule, right? Now, so that is how we are going to do it. I hope you understand and appreciate the method. Have a good look at it, right? And then soon we are going to jump into a lot of difficult problems, right? Thanks and all the best.